This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Now we're going to look at how the internet can help business strategy, particularly in marketing. Now we know what the internet is, I hope. It's a, it's a global network, uh, essentially connecting lots and lots of uh, computers. You get to a particular site by typing in the URL, the Uniform Resource Locator. That's you know www.bbc or www.opentuition.com. That's its its URL, and it can be used for all sorts of things. Marketing. You can put on help sites, frequently asked questions. Uh, there, it, it it can take sales orders. You can order over the inf- the internet. Uh, it provides information to people. A lot of almost academic material is available there. Uh, you can provide feedback to companies. There are forums, email, adverts, links to links to links and other uh, sites. Even if you don't log on to a site, uh, a site can send to your computer what's called a cookie, which is a little bit of uh, data that comes and sits on your computer. And if you were to visit that site again, it knows you've been there, it knows what pages you have visited and uh, so on. So it begins to allow you to to track visitor activity. Uh, And if you are uh, a business and you have an internet site, uh, remember that there's a kind of two-way connection there. You might be sending information out to your customers that they can see on their computer at home. Uh, but there's a danger that you have uh, people who will be sending uh, perhaps not so much information as malicious code to you. Uh, and if you're not careful, this may be a way in for viruses or maybe a way in for other people to uh, access parts of your computer system uh, which should remain confidential. So a firewall is needed to prevent unauthorized access from outside. Now, before we get on to the next slide, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, illustrate the use of the internet uh, using my Amazon account. Uh, And we'll see uh, all the various uh, kind of capabilities that are in that account, and then we'll relate them to some of the theory that comes later. So here we have uh, the main account page of my internet account. So let's see what it allows me to do. And you see here, I can access my orders. So here are the orders I've placed for the last six months. So we've got a kind of scientific book there. We have a book by Charles Dickens uh, there. Tom was all right, I wouldn't buy it if I were you. Uh, Down here, I bought some electronic equipment. There's, uh, when I bought the microphone, you are currently hearing me through. So that's, uh, that's kind of all there. It allows me to buy it again, of course. It allows me to return or replace the items, presumably within a, um, a particular time. If I have bought something 10 years ago, I don't think I could uh, replace it. Uh, but it also allows me to, say, write a product review on that. So it allows me to kind of in- interact with this, I can give it a, a kind of star rating and, uh, and so on. Uh, and I can then write a bit of, a, once I do my star rating, I can then uh, rank a bit of, um, you know, I can write something actually about it. So I can write a review. But what I can also uh, do, that I go down to, let's say, this one here, I can read other people's reviews. So I can read what 81 customer reviews and we'll see how it is. Most people seem to like it uh, and and very often reading other readers reviews and so on uh, is much more interesting than writing than than reading reviews from professional critics. What else uh, do we have in here? Well, it says I can look inside it. So here we are, Uh, I've got a kind of little virtual book in here. I can begin to uh, open it up, 
can go to presumably various of the chapters in here uh, and I can actually have a look at that. You, uh, not everything is quite as generous uh, in terms of looking inside. Oh yeah, well, end of the sample. We can get as far as uh, page, I think it was eight, or chapter eight, something of that sort. Uh, uh, but it's very useful for, for books. Uh, you can see the contents pages, for example. You can get a, a little snippet of some of the writing to see whether it seems to be too difficult for you or just about the right level of detail and uh, the like. So it was looking at uh, current orders, orders within six months. It allows me to read other people's order, uh, reviews, allows me to place orders, allows me, even before I buy a book, to look inside. There's no point in me really looking inside it now, of course. But let's go back and let's look at my orders and look at this. Uh, this will take me orders all the way back to the year 2000, uh, which is presumably when I opened my account. Uh, and it forgets nothing. So if you look at maybe what I bought in the year 2000, we have something really uh, interesting in here like e-business and e-commerce. You can be benefiting from that. Uh, human resource management, you're probably going to be benefiting from that purchase as well. Uh, and again, I, I don't think I could probably return it now, but I could uh, write a product review and so on. So it never really uh, forgets anything. But because of what I have uh, ordered, it allows me or provides for me recommendations. So here are some recommendations because oh, quite a few years ago now, I think a couple of years ago anyway, I, I bought a, a map of New York. So it's coming up with all New York kind of related stuff, all, more maps and so on as though I would and need it. Uh, I think I must have uh, ordered some films for them, from them or something of that, that sort. It's suggesting other films in here. And then remember, uh, we were looking at a book Charles Dickens. Well, here are you know two other books, several other books by Charles Dickens. It's picked up that I'm interested in, in maybe that author or interested in that city in terms of New York, and is making very tailored, very specific recommendations, individualized recommendations, just for me. Uh, and uh, I can obviously put in search terms here. I can find out what's uh, uh, available, if you like, in uh, books. Uh, so let's say what we want to uh, look for, we did it earlier on, knowledge management. So knowledge management uh, in theory and practice. See what, what books is going to come up with uh, there. And it's got all sorts of books in here. I'm sure they're all absolutely fascinating uh, in here. I don't know any of them particularly. Uh, but again, I can uh, look at one with a nice cover, uh, see what's in there. Will it give me a look inside or not? It doesn't give me a, we have a look inside there. And I can begin to see, you know, I wanted to buy this book new, this sort of uh, topic list, which is going to be uh, be, be covering and uh, so on. We get through to the all the stuff at the beginning. There's one little fault. It gives all the stuff at the beginning, the copyright and so on. It takes you a while to get through maybe. Uh, to what's actually in the uh, uh, some of the chapters there, uh, and I could decide on a this brief review whether I want to place an order or not. The Amazon system is very very good. It's got many many capabilities, which will now come and list. So I looked at a typical Amazon account. Let's relate that to a very useful model for this paper, which is a six eyes of e-business that once you begin trading uh, through the internet using e-business, uh, you gain access to these. First of all, <coughs> there is intelligence. Uh, so Amazon knows every book I've bought, every piece of hardware I've bought. It also knows every book I may have looked at and not bought. So what it is doing is, is, is gaining fantastic information about really my interests. Uh, we saw that I had book bought one book by Charles Dickens. It knows I might be interested in Charles Dickens. Uh, and of course, what it was able to do then was individualization. It gave me individual recommendations uh, for me. It gave me recommendations for maps of New York because I may have bought a guidebook for that and, and, and something. 
So, so from intelligence here comes individualization. No one else is going to see quite the same page of Amazon, quite the same information as Amazon as I will. It's very specifically directed at me to my interests. We have interactivity. We've seen that I can read other people's reviews, I can write reviews, I can return products, uh, I can go in and look at a few pages of the, uh, the, the book and so on. Uh, I can, uh, uh, when I get to buying the thing, I can then choose whether I want it you know, delivered very quickly with a special price or more slowly and so on. Lots of interactivity there. And the idea is that this interactivity kind of builds up a bit of a bond with it. If you can write reviews, read reviews, etc., uh, you, you are going to, you know, feel part of the, uh, feel as though you're recognised and loved by the company. Integration. Uh, integration, uh, if I had bought one of those books, uh, as soon as I, and it's very easy to buy on Amazon, it's kind of one-click buy, uh, as soon as I buy one of those books, it, it's transmitted to the Amazon uh, warehouse and automatically machines begin to go to the right shelf, you know, bring that book down onto the conveyor belt in a little box, trundles along, probably wrapped automatically as well. It's probably picked and packed and posted to me without any human intervention at all. Independence. I have no idea where in the UK Amazon's warehouse is nor do I care. It's not necessary for me to know that. So independence refers to independence of geographical location. And this is a tremendous advantage to, to small businesses. When you look at an internet site, provided it's well designed, you don't know, for example, where the company's based. You don't even know the size of the company. It's very, very useful for small companies in a focused niche market. Uh, it used to be finding these companies, <coughs> excuse me, finding customers could be quite difficult. Uh, but now you have your internet site, you get the right keywords to be found on Google. Really the world is your market and your actual geographical position doesn't matter. You're released from dependence on that. And finally, there is industry. Uh, that uh, e-business can radically change industry structure. In the book industry for Amazon, uh, you know, huge numbers of books and indeed other products now are, are bought online rather than going to, to shops. It's certainly hurting uh, bookshops. Think what e-business has done to the music uh, industry. It used to be the way you got your music was uh, uh, CDs and there were shops you'd go and buy CDs. There aren't nearly as many of those now. Uh, you simply download them uh, and, and, and in fact groups, bands don't make a lot of money from uh, their music anymore. Uh, the, the situation is kind of reversed. It used to be you'd, you'd release music uh, and that's where you made your money and then to kind of support that you'd have the tour. Now what uh, people have is, is a reverse. They kind of release the music, it's almost given away for free. And where they make the money is touring and giving live performances. So a radical change in the industry. And we're seeing it in television. Uh, more and more people, uh, rather than watching live television, they watch catch-up television or they go to something like Netflix. Uh, and if you want to three, see three episodes in a row, you can do it. Why does television have the arrogance uh, of saying you can see one episode this week, another one that week, another one the third week. Why can't I overindulge in watching three episodes at once? And they will have to think, uh, you know, how the future of the television industry, film industry, is going to change as well. This is not quite uh, so uh, important. Uh, it's uh, uh, really how e-business can evolve uh, a little bit. Uh, it starts, most people have a very simple web presence, just a page maybe for advertising. Uh, once you've done that, you can also set up an intranet. Okay, so intranet's an internal internet using exactly the same technology. Once you have your basic website set up, the next step is probably going to e-commerce where you can buy and sell online. Uh, but e-commerce uh, itself is not the whole story. You have to really have e-business. It's very easy to put up uh, product lists on the internet and let people kind of buy them. But you tend to 
then expect the goods to come quite quickly. Uh, and e-business is really the, the completion of the promise where it's not just the purchase that's easy, but actually the delivery follows pretty quickly as well. There is no point in letting people buy over the internet if it takes two weeks for the goods to come. All you're doing is advertising on an international scale how incompetent you are. There is then e-enterprise. Uh, 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 management processes and business processes are redesigned, transactions are monitored in real time. Think of the airline business. Uh, the airline business, they keep continuous track of how a plane is filling up, continuously monitoring what the seat prices should be and so on. That's e-enterprise. And then uh, transformation, new business and management models are required. Uh, and a good example is, we've referred to it before, is something like iTunes. Completely changing perhaps uh, the way the uh, business is actually being conducted. Business patterns, e-shopping uh, like uh, Amazon, e-auctions like eBay. You can have something called also reverse auction, uh, which is really used uh, for, for, for re-procurement. I mean, the way eBay works is that somebody puts something up for sale and you know the people bid for it and then at a certain time a certain date whoever's at the top wins it e-procurement works the other way i advertise that i want to buy goods uh, and so a supplier will come in and say well i will sell you these for ten thousand and then another supplier will come in and say well no i'll sell them to you for eight thousand and then seven thousand maybe six thousand five hundred and at the the cutoff it's the lowest supplier uh, who will get the deal. That's called a reverse auction, because instead of the prices going up, the prices come down. If we go to this one next, disintermediation means take out the middleman. Uh, this is like removing travel agents. Travel agents are a, a bit of a rarity nowadays, uh, because many people can go and book directly with the airlines or directly with hotels. Re-intermediation is where the middleman is put back. Uh, so a site like Expedia is an online travel agent, uh, but it allows you to track to, rather than going to just British Airways, you can go into Expedia and the other types of sites and you can say, I want to fly from here to here. And it brings, oh, brings up all the carriers really who are flying there. But of course they were gonna take a, a cut of the money. Counter-mediation, is where there's a middleman, but it's owned by the principals. Uh, so, for example, you might have a travel site which is owned by three airlines. Uh, and you might think you're going to a kind of independent uh, sort of site, uh, but there's a, obviously a risk that these three airlines will make sure that their flights are the ones which are shown at the top. You can advertise other people's goods and services. Uh, Google can be uh, uh, used to put uh, adverts on your site so that if people click on those adverts uh, Google gets some money, you get some money. This is what happens in open tuition. This is how open tuition earns a little bit of money. Uh, 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 adverts come up, maybe advertising accountancy firms or tuition firms uh, and when you click on that uh, expressing an interest, remember we said that advertising the internet is loved by advertisers because you know if you've clicked on a course on ACCA it means you're interested in it uh, and the advertiser only pays once it's clicked on. Uh, we can uh, advertise our own goods and services, the, the shop window like uh, Amazon does and so on. And then there is customer relationship management using the internet and e-business to form a close relationship with customers. So let's just uh, see what that is, this customer relationship management. One sort of relationship with your customer is really a zero relationship. This is a, a transactional marketing or transactional relationship. In, in a way, you don't know who your customers are. You just kind of hope they come back, yeah, but you wouldn't know. You live from one transaction to another. What relationship marketing wants to do is to build a fantastic loyalty so that the customer keeps coming back to you. And it starts with, uh, first of all, uh, salespeople talk about prospects. 
people who haven't bought at all. Then uh, you have a first-time user, first-time purchaser, they become a customer. That's often a big breakthrough. Uh, they're, they're testing the water with you, maybe uh, putting in a little order for the first time that hasn't gone with their main supplier. You want to do that one well. Then if they like you, they'll keep coming back to you. This is where a customer changes to a client. So a firm of lawyers talks about clients because they expect you to keep going back there with all your legal work. Then you're not just a kind of passive client, you become enthusiastic and very soon you become an advocate. You are recommending this supplier to other people and that, that's a fantastically powerful form of advertising. And then at the apex of the, uh, uh, the marketing ladder as they call it, this customer relationships management, you become a partner there's a change almost in perception of the relationship between supplier and buyer. Further down the chain, maybe at the first time purchaser, I supply you with something. If it isn't quite right, you're going to complain. You're going to get the, you want to get the maximum kind of compensation or reduction in price because of the inconvenience there. Up at the top, you see at this partnership level that there's a mutual dependency. I, as a supplier, depend on you, the buyer, but you, the buyer, depend on me, the supplier, to supply the goods. And there's no point in finger pointing if something goes wrong. What you want to happen is if something goes wrong between you, is you want to cooperate, as you would with a partner, to stop it happening again. So instead of a, the kind of slightly, uh, maybe slightly aggressive relationship there is between buyers and sellers at the bottom, there is this uh, more friendly is the wrong word, but this, this recognition of mutual dependency in each other to solve problems and to rely on each other. Emphasis is on uh, relationship, uh, e-marketing and so on. Uh, we need to know a lot about our customers, they need to know a lot about us, and so on. And it, it's what you want to do with your customers. And at one time I was involved, uh, part of a little software company, and we had a customer relationship management system on a little bit of software. And here's what it did. A customer would ring up, on our screens uh, would uh, come, before we'd answer the phone, would come the name of the customer. Uh, just simple uh, recognition of the, the darling number. And then it would say, here's the name of the customer, and then it would say what the customer's business was. So they could be in education, they could be a commercial organisation, they could be a, a government organisation, whatever it was, it said this is what they are. Because you don't necessarily know from the name what a customer is, is their, their business is. Then I'll come up with a list of names saying this is a chief executive officer, this is a sales director, this is maybe the IT person. Uh, and so you have the name. So if somebody says this is Mr. Smith, you can say, oh yes, this is the IT director. And it would actually begin then to uh, record little bits of information about these people. Uh, it might know that uh, Mr. Smith, the IT uh, director, was maybe a supporter of, I know, Barcelona Football Club. Why would we record that? Well, this is the sort of information that a good salesman would record. Remember we, th we talked about uh, tacit knowledge, uh, the, the kind of little, almost, almost seem insignificant bits of information that a salesperson will know about their customer and allows you to have a, a bit of a chat before we get down to the, it allows you to be friendly to the customer. Then we had a list of all the products we'd already sold that customer. So the product name, the date, the amount of money and so on. And this allows us immediately to get into a conversation. Oh, how are you getting on with that bit of software you bought three months ago? You know, any, any comments on it? Or we can see, oh, you bought a bit of software two years ago. It's now been updated and re-released. Would you be interested in an update? And then what it would do, uh, it, uh, you have a conversation with the, uh, the person. We would we'd note down what the conversation was about. We'd make a kind of little um, summary entry about what the conversation was about. 
And that's very important uh, because if, say, somebody were to ring up with a complaint and they explain the complaint to you and you say, well, what you should do is you should reinstall the software or whatever it was. Uh, and they say, and you say, come back to us if that doesn't work. And if they ring up again, let's say the next day, having reinstalled the software, you don't want them to have to explain what their problem was and you don't want them to tell them again, have you thought of reinstalling the software? Because it might be a different person who answered the phone. Uh, and so this little, little uh, record of what you said to them makes you look like a joined up organization that you, that you have their interests at heart, that you're not making them repeat the same information over and over again. And the final thing we had was a little kind of uh, alert uh, that you could uh, set. If I said to somebody, I'll ring you on Friday to see how you're getting on, then it's important I do that. So I could set a little alarm, really, uh, ring, you know, Mr. Smith on Friday to discuss whether the software is working. And I was, if you like, at the receiving end of one of these systems, again, with, with Amazon. Uh, what had happened was uh, I uh, was going on a quite a long trip for about uh, six weeks, a mixture of teaching and uh, a holiday. And before I departed, uh, my wife for my birthday had bought me a Kindle e-reader. So before I went, I put some books on it to read and I set off on my six week uh, travel. And unfortunately, I think about the third time I switched on the Kindle, it, it didn't work. So I rang up Amazon uh, and they said, right, we'll send you a new one. You send the, the old one back, which is quite good. They would send a new one before I had to send the old one. I said, ah, but I'm abroad for six weeks. Can you send it abroad? And they said, no, we can't because of um, you know, VAT and tax and imports, exports and so on. It's going to be very complicated. Uh, they said, when are you back? And I said, I'm back on Sunday. Let's say it was Sunday, the, you know, the 6th of June, whatever. So, right, uh, we will make sure that as a Kindle gets you on Monday the 7th of June, six weeks away. And I got back on the Sunday the 6th of June and in my email uh, there was an email from Amazon saying, we have dispatched your new Kindle, we hope you had a good trip. And, and that kind of made me immediately terribly impressed with them. Not only had they done what they promised, that they had dispatched it six weeks away, they remembered to do that, but also they made this little comment, we hope you had a good trip, uh, which, which is, you know, building a fantastic uh, kind of potential for loyalty to that company. There can be certain barriers, certain objections to e-business. Uh, some companies think it's going to take or be too expensive to set up. Certainly the, the full kind of blown trading system might be very expensive to set up, but, but ordinary simple websites are not particularly expensive. Maybe the type of business uh, won't lend itself to very much uh, e-business, uh, maybe no more than just a page saying you know, what your address is and what you do, uh, but it's not the sort of business you could sell over the internet. You know, a hairdressing business is obviously very limited in potential as to what it can do. Running costs may frighten people if they think they have to keep going back maybe to a, a consultant to change the website and change prices. Time to set up a system, a bit of a weak objection. You never start, you never finish. Uh, but maybe people think it's just kind of too much effort. No in-house skills. Uh, but many uh, internet systems, they can be set up by an expert. And then there can be relatively simple interfaces now, maybe for changing photographs, uploading photographs, changing price lists and so on. This has become much easier as the internet has progressed. Uh, it, it's become much more user friendly for the, 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 the website. Maybe our suppliers and customers are not interested. So, for example, maybe if you had a, 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 a site which was predominantly aimed at very elderly people, uh, then you'd say, well, you know, many of these people are not internet savvy, they're not particularly comfortable with getting onto the internet. There, there's maybe no point in me you know, investing a lot for, for maybe only a relatively few people who'll be actually interested in it. Of course, that's changing now. 
uh, the internet, uh, you know, what's it, 20 years old, something of that sort. Uh, even people as old as me can cope with it. And finally, uh, security worries. Worries maybe uh, that uh, customer credit card information will become released. Uh, worries maybe of hackers and so on. Uh, but there, there should be, you know, there's a lot of very sensitive stuff which is held quite securely on e-business systems. It requires care, of course, but it shouldn't really be uh, any sort of uh, absolute impediment to it at all if people take the right advice.